Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Juno here. So, I want to preference this with, this is way too early to tell, in my opinion. This is just based off of conversation I've been having with buddies, and after seeing the Bonanza polls that that one guy showed on his video the other day, um, I made a guesstimate, and so, it struck up a conversation of a ban list and what it could mean. Um, and so I wanted to talk about it on my channel. So, um, what this is, is I'm not going to do the series again like I did last time with the four part ban list prediction series and all that. But I'll probably do a couple of videos here and there talking about a potential ban list and what it could foretell. Um, but here's just a early guesstimation that I have based off of my logic. My logic is that after crossover breakers or even right before and right before YCS Anaheim potentially, I think Konami is going to want to make Ryzel and Malice the two blatantly best decks. And I think in order to do that, you have to axe Snake Eye. Um, because if not, I feel like even if Snake Eye stays the way it is, and the Fire King Snake Eye as Amina deck, with potentially the uh, Fiendsmith engine even, um, stays the same way it is, and then Crossover comes out, um, I think that's just the best deck, even after Ryzel and Malice come out in Crossover. So... My personal thought or belief is that in order for Konami to make Ryzel and Malice the best deck, they have to hit certain things preemptively. Now, if they want YCS Anaheim to happen post crossovers, I think I think crossovers comes first and then Anaheim happens afterward. Um, and they want a YCS with potentially all of them, with Fire King Snake Eye as Amina, with White Force as Amina, and with. Uh, even the new Ryo King <laughs> cards that are going to come out in it with like Voices Voice and Sword Soul and all that and like Ryzel and Malice on top of that, they're just going to leave the format as is. But if they want, in my theory is, they're going to make it so that like players are like, oh no, I need to invest fully in crossovers because Konami hit the best deck, which is Fire King Snake Eye as a meter right now. Um, so... That's what my band list is pretty stuff. of. As you can see, I have a couple of cards in question here. My cards mainly in question are, I think Skill Dream should go. I think it's a crappy, sacky one of that I haven't fallen victim to yet, but I've watched players fall in victim to, and they just don't have the Cosmic in hand, or something of that nature, like a Harpies or even Lightning Storm to do away with it. They just lose. It sucks. Um... This is the age-old complaint that we've seen in the TCG, and <laughs> my thought process with Shifter being on here is that I theoretically think that it could get the Max C treatment because the OCG did semi-limit Max C. I'm wondering if the TCG is going to semi-limit Shifter because the long-standing conversation I have in my player group, in my like local group, is that. Uh, we all compare Shifter as the TCG's version of Maxi. It's just that card that Konami never touched but knew was insane um, all this time. And I feel like if they finally did it over there with Maxi, there's a potential that here they could do it with Shifter. Um, so yeah, that's my conversation there. So. More potential hits that I think. It depends on how strong they want to make Ryzel. Um, if they want to make Ryzel like purely the best deck, they would go ahead and axe Barrier. However, if they want rogue players, which I think they will, they're going to want people that can still only play on a budget to play the game, of course. So I think D Barrier will actually stay, but potentially this card could be hit in some fashion. Um, the age-old question, should Runic get hit? I don't know. I haven't heard about it nearly as much this format, so... But I know it's a thing. 
Um, <laughs> I think they're playing us so hard. I think they're playing us so hard because of Bonanza. They were all just in the tins, and then Bonanza, boom, prints them. And I, I think that Wanted may go to one, or I don't think Black Witch would go to one or anything. I think you could see potentially like this and this or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, I think Wanted is definitely going to be hit in some fashion, especially after the multiple replays. Um, I also talked about my buddies with the theoretical swap of Paint coming back to 3, but then the trade-off is Fenrir goes to 1. Uh, the logic behind that is that Kashir is on the rise, Unicorn is a devastating card right now that we all know of, and Fenrir is like the cherry on top of that, so I could potentially see this going to 1. I'm wondering about board breakers. Are there getting to be too many board breakers? You have three Raigeki, three Dark Hole, two Lightning Storm, three uh, Droplet, three Dark Ruler. Like, you have so many board breakers in this game. Could we see a potential board breaker hit again? Like, excuse me. Sorry about that. Sun surprised the heck out of me. Could we see, um,. A board breaker take a hit in some fashion, whether it be Droplet, Regeki, Dark Hole, um, Shoot Lightning Storm, could it take another hit, Dark Ruler, something of that nature. This would be that kind of ban list where one of those just random hits happen, because I think it was this time last year that Lightning Storm went to uh, two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think Bonfire is due for the Rota treatment, uh, that being reinforcement of the army. Um, if reinforcements at one, I think Rota, I mean, I think Bonfire definitely warrants itself to be at one as well. Um, otherwise, it's like the Pot of Desires, Pot of Prosperity argument, where it's like, why is one at three and the other one at one? Like, still weird to me. If, the, like, why are these pots certain ones at three and certain ones at one? It's kind of weird. Um, and then I have uh, these guys, I think if they do make some kind of comeback, with a deck at all, I would believe it'd be one of these two, either Zoo or Pendulum. I don't think Masterpiece, I don't think um, Broad Bull, I don't think Spirals, I don't think anything like that. I just think it's potential here. Um, my actual most like, what's funny right now is with the game the way it currently is right now, I'm wondering, my biggest potential that I see for the ban list is I see potentially called by coming to two just because of how many hand traps there are in this damn game and they're just printing so like one after another like pancakes it's just craziness so i'm wondering if maybe unless i could be wrong and i could have the opposite like thinking of it where cross out comes to two and then we just have two and one and that be your three defensive cards for that um, then I want to move to my three big maybes of the ban list. And these are things that I've been talking about while all this other conversation is going on with Rizel and Malice and Konami trying to, um, nerf all the other big archetypes like Snake Eye and all that stuff to make room for Rizel and Malice. Um, here are my questions. Are they actually going to touch Charmies anytime soon? Because I'm on the side of the fence of no. I don't think that the Charmies are going anywhere anytime soon. I think that we're going to have the Charmies in play in Yu-Gi-Oh! in the TCG for at least the next year before they hit any kind of list. If they do. Um, that's my argument. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think that this is going to be a very long test of can people play around this card because they're going to reprint the hell out of these cards. Be prepared for that. These cards will not be $130 and $65 a piece in the next year. They will probably have been reprinted two times, maybe even three, by the by this time next year. Mark my words. So, I don't think that they're due for a hit. Kieran. Is Kieran a big enough problem to be addressed in some way. 
what that card does for that deck, especially if they're going to keep Snake Eye around, is this another indirect hit to this deck in a way for Konami to say, look, we hit the best deck. And that being by hitting Fire King Care. Um, in my opinion, I don't think they're going to, but the question that has been asked a lot is, will they? And I've been wrong plenty of times. Like I, like I told you guys back in August, over and over and over, I think that, uh, sorry, I just got to work. I think that um, talents warranted a limit. I think it should have gone to one. Um, and I was completely wrong. Fully admit up to that. Um, I don't think Kieran is that good to be hit. And I don't think that's the problem with the Fire King Snake Eye as Amina deck. I think the problem with the Fire King Snake Eye as Amina deck is the Snake Eye cards. Because the Snake Eye cards just make that deck go forever. You have all the Fire King interactions it can do on both players' turns. You have the Azamina making a full-on negate wanted engine that is always an extender, a great starter, um, can get you extra cards, advantage, things of all that nature. And then you have Snake Eyes on top of it. And I just think it's too insane. And then, God forbid, people were playing Fiendsmith on top of that. So I, I've had games where you guys can watch me where I'm playing on Omega, and I watch my opponent combo for like six minutes, and I'm like, all right, they've got full Snake Eye Fire King as Mina board, and then boom, they send Engraver to the grave. And it's just like, holy cow, this was over seven minutes ago. Like, I was a fool for just sitting here, you know? So, in my opinion, if they're going to address the deck, I think you just got to do away with Snake Eye. Do they got the balls to do it? I don't know. And then my final thing I want to talk to you guys about is Tempai. Um, does Tempai warrant another hit? Because it this is the dictionary example definition of do you got the answer or you know. Um, can you get past my 27, 25 hand traps slash board breakers? Can you keep up? And then do you have the non-engine in hand to stop me? Better have it. That's the definition of this deck. Um, I'll, I see some people saying that it's really easy to beat because all you need is to have the Imperm, which, cool. I, I mean, you're, I'm glad you have the Imperm, but most of the times I just feather dust it away. So unless you're big brain enough to keep one in hand and then have one on the field, which some players do, I've seen it happen. However, most of the time it doesn't. Um, and I've heard a lot of players just say that the deck is just so degenerate that I hit it. And if Snake Eye were to go away, and Rizel and Malice come in, do those two decks compete against Tempai? Does Tempai even care about them? Because could Tempai just theoretically main deck barrier for going first? or something of that nature. I mean, the call for locally here in Colorado that I hear a lot of is Lancia, the artifact Lancia for Malice, and D-Barrier for Rise Up. Those are the two cards that I hear a lot of people saying, oh, just have those. To me, which is great, cool, going first, but what about going second against Rise Up? Because they can build seven disruptions like that. So, um, a lot to think about, a lot to process. Again, this is way too early to tell. This is just me going based off of several conversations I've had in the past, like, nine or ten days. And I wanted to put it on my YouTube channel so that way I have something to reference later on in the future when we get closer to a ban list prediction time. I can kind of look back at this and be like, okay, that's what I was thinking in my cell on that thing. Same thought. Um, I... Personally, I predict another similar ban list around like December 19th, 21st or something like that, making it effective for January 1st, 2025. That's what I think is going to happen again. But there are a lot of people that think it's going to happen pre and I, so we'll just have to wait and see. But that'll be it for me. Please like, comment, subscribe.
be kind, be respectful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hey guys, real quick before we get into the video today, I just wanted to bring to your attention. I do have a TCG player store um, that I sell pretty frequently on here. If you guys come to my store, Matthew Cody's Cards, um, you'll see I have several cards up here for sale. Just reach out to me and let me know. Um, if you guys are interested in anything like that, uh, you can message me on uh youtube and just say hey i'm interested in this card you have and maybe we can work out a deal or something uh i also have an ebay store where i do sell pretty frequently with like decors and uh play mats and football cards and stuff like that so just reach out guys please uh enjoy the video peace Put up on the pedal wall.